biomass crop is essentially a biological solar panel. It is converting the light using the water and nutrients that are in the soil into fixed carbon or fixed energy. The politicians are grappling with the concepts of low carbon economies, running down the use of fossil fuels and bringing in photosynthesis as the driver. In that world, it will demand dedicated bioenergy crops that are very efficient, they're very cheap to grow, have all the right characteristics to meet the business needs. And Miscanthus is one of those crops. Well, Miscanthus is a C4 grass that comes from Eastern Asia. It's a plant which uh, represents a tremendous amount of environmental adaptability. And um, it was identified as a potential biomass crop in Europe in the 1960s. Miscanthus is, is great as a, as a biomass project because it grows in really poor areas. So it's gonna grow in the areas that aren't useful for food production or for, for grazing and things like that. So it's not competing with any other product. In terms of environment, the huge benefit of Miscanthus is the low amount of inputs. This has come into its fourth growing season now here on some fairly, fairly poor soils, grade 3B most likely in Wales. This has had no fertiliser at all, so no inputs, no pesticides so far either. So again, no sort of impacts into the headlands and the woodlands surrounding the field and sort of wider environment. The fact that the, the crop is perennial, it's only planted once every 10 or 15 years, on top of which it's harvested midwinter when it's completely died back, so it's already lost a lot of its moisture, so it's already ideal for, for burning. And it can be easily chipped or pelleted into a form that it could be either used sort of power station-wise or domestically. Uh, every year you cut it all down and it regrows. So that means that all of the, uh, all of the CO2 that's emitted in, in using it for fuel uh, is reabsorbed within the growing cycle annually. Any carbon that emits from a fossil fuel is a net addition to the atmosphere, whereas from bioenergy it's, uh, it's actually recycled. Basically it comes from the atmosphere and goes back to the atmosphere. It had clearly evolved to be a high biomass producer and it also evolved to work in more temperate climates and not tropical uh, climates. So it had a lot going forward uh, for it before uh, breeders came along to try and improve it. Well, in the middle 2000s, Sarah's recognised that dedicated energy crops uh, had a role to play. And so we looked around the world at where the research base was and the, the group at Aberystwyth was, uh, clearly came to the top of our list for Miscanthus. Work with Miscanthus hits a number of targets for us. Uh, it is absolutely essential from my perspective that our research does get out into the real world and, and has good benefits. Uh, and working with industry is a key way of doing that. Uh, it's very important that we have effective knowledge exchange where our scientists are very aware of what the commercial imperatives are, what the real requirements are there in the real world. And at the same time, the commercial activity is informed by what is capable and what we can do with fairly fundamental biology, but then leading all the way through to application. If you want to have a crop that can be scalable to uh, millions of acres, it has to be seed-based. What they've done at Aberystwyth is unique. They've collected the, the largest uh, collection of native uh, species from Asia, evaluated them, uh, and they've learned how to hybridize them. And that collection and that knowledge is something that is utterly unique. It doesn't exist in any other uh, plant breeding establishment. Uh, we collected about 1,500 accessions, collecting germplasm that is diverse, it comes from a lot of different environments and diverse in terms of its phenotype, thicknesses of stems and uh, flowering times, etc. Brought them back to the UK and we grew them then in European trials. Once we had identified the outstanding plants in the European climate, we brought those together and we started to make uh, hybrids between plants that 
we believed combined traits that were complementary, traits that would increase the overall productive potential of the crop. In this crossing chamber, we're making crosses between plants which would never normally meet in the wild. We're trying to exploit all the best traits a plant with many stems and not too much leaf at harvest and produce a huge yield from the same acreage of land. So we can grow a range of different miscanthus here and uh, we can identify miscanthus that uh, display a combination of high biomass and high water use efficiency so that farmers can get high yielding miscanthus in whatever environment they grow it. When you've made some crosses that you believe may well be promising, you need to evaluate these in the same sorts of places and settings where you could expect farmers to grow them. At Aberystwyth, each year we start with probably a couple of hundred different hybrids. We then plant out small numbers of those, measure them for a couple of years and select probably the best 50 or so out of those. Plant those in higher numbers, larger scale trials, and then reselect probably five or ten of the best ones out of that to go into large scale commercial trials. Uh, the university group at Aberystwyth uh, have working colleagues at many different sites across Europe, in different countries, right into Eastern Europe, uh, down into Southern Italy, in France, in Germany, in Scotland. Those relationships they've exploited in, in helping organize and run these uh, field trials. So it's only the, the data, the performance, in different environments that, that counts. So it's absolutely crucial to get that. Then there's so much variation across fields that just testing a few plants while you have to do that at the beginning is inadequate. And so you need to, to put in place bigger and bigger field trials that get you closer and closer to what a farmer uh, needs to see and can expect. That's a whole chain of activities that, that Ceres, Aberystwyth University and Terra Vesta are now working together on, putting different emphases from the academic uh, through to the commercial. So here we are at the trials uh, field. The crops, uh, I think, looking very good. Yeah, it's been a good growing season for it. The, the earlier crops I planted last year have come particularly well and this year's crops now have really uh, caught up and they're looking good. This is a trials field of novel seed-based hybrids that have been developed and the purpose of the trial really is to A, make sure that they are frost hardy and yield well and are very consistent uh, one year onto another. The other part of it is to make sure that things that work well in a laboratory actually work at field scale. So there's a lot of agronomy uh, on trial here. So for instance, these were all planted with, uh, with commercial machinery uh, rather than hand planted with, uh, with laboratory technicians. What we're looking for here is, uh, is stem height to uh, some extent, but actually probably more than that. Uh, stem density, i.e. the number of stems uh, you get off each plant, because the combination of those two factors is what will give you uh, biomass yield. That has to be the commercial aim from the farmer, um, but it also has to be one that performs reliably year on year. To be working with those commercial partners is really, really important for us. For a long time we've been trialling uh, seedling varieties, um, but haven't had the opportunity to really ramp it up and go into the, the commercialisation, which is really the, the next massively important step that we're at. Here we got the GNT3 plaques after the 11 weeks, and there, there is very nice uh, about 20, 30 centimeters long stem with few very strong uh, leaves and very nice uh, root system. Here we got something from, from very small seed, 
growing to that kind of big plant in the first year, producing the rhizome and regrow for the next uh, 20 years. We develop also the system for the planting on the field uh, with the film laying, extending the planting season for us. And it's much cheaper in final product than digging out the rhizome, splitting the rhizome is, is very costly, very time consuming. And here is just growing the seeds. The yield can be achieved in two years, even in UK climate. They, they now only got one year and the second year is the 95% of the yield. What is is huge increase uh, of the productivity for, for the farmers. What means is they, they start to pay back uh, for the biomass uh, much quicker than with Gigantius and that's a huge achievement also. This is massive really. The opportunity to go from a seed-based product means the rate of expansion can be much, much greater than that of rhizome. The new miscanthus we bring is, is something game-changer for, for the bioenergy. It uh, definitely will change the perspective of the biomass, will bring absolutely new crop for the biomass uh, market and I think it's very important to, for developing the bioenergy sector, especially the biomass sector, not only in UK but in the Europe uh, and in the world uh, perspective. I'm excited to be involved in the development of a crop like this because the biology is new, we're taking some things in the wild, we're creating a new crop, we're creating new options for the rural economies, new options for such a broad range of industries. Over and, and above all of that, we're actually trying to make a contribution to a very different way of living on this planet. These crops represent a way of recycling carbon from the atmosphere in a very efficient way. I don't believe it's a one-stop solution, but I believe it's a valuable contribution to that whole future renewable energy mix.